Alright everyone, what is going on? Buster Barnes here, bringing you my recap slash review of Chelsea's 0-0 draw against Manchester United at Stamford Bridge. A game which wasn't as dull as the scoreline suggested, but maybe on a different day we could have seen a bit of a different result. I will be giving you guys my recap of the key moments in the match, and as always discussing my player ratings and my player of the season point scoring system as well if you enjoy leave a like and as always comment down below your player ratings and thoughts as well and as always you can subscribe to the channel for more Chelsea FC content but as expected we did see the 3-4-3 formation against the Red Devils and um, a few little changes in there though obviously we knew with the big games coming up the ones we've already faced obviously our 1-0 win against Atletico Madrid we probably did need to see at some point a few other players given a go and some others rested as well. We did see N'Golo Kante in the midfield with Kovacic was a little bit sceptical because we know that maybe their partnership isn't as strong as maybe the one between Jorginho and the other two. Um, we also saw Ben Chilwell at left wing back which was a nice sight to see and we did see Hakim Ziyech on the wing as well with Mason Mount and Giroud up front so a few little changes and did leave me a little bit skeptical but we all know that Tuchel most of the time seems to know what he was doing so um yeah very optimistic coming into this game and really the tides pretty much changed throughout the match sometimes it was us dominating the ball sometimes it was Manchester United I'd say we dominated pretty much the first period of the first half having the ball creating the chances then it was sort of even in the middle of the first half and then towards the end United definitely took it to us a little bit a little bit of a controversy in the first half Callum Hudson the door with a potential handball in the penalty area it was not given on um, the VAR review um, which is definitely a controversial one obviously Manchester United have come out complaining since then in a little bit of a crybaby kind of way but to be fair um, I don't know I think it's a tough one it obviously hits his hand you can argue that Greenwood's arm hits his hand into the ball however I don't know I feel like it's a one where your opinion basically just depends on which team you support. Because I feel like, really, if that ball happened to Manchester United, they'd be saying, oh, it wasn't a handball, we couldn't help it. And if it happens, and, you know, Chelsea fans would be complaining if that was the case. So I think it's a bit of a 50-50 one. You know, you look at the rules. If the rules state that that's not a handball, then I guess that is fair enough. Hudson Lloyd didn't really know anything about it. Um, and the ball didn't really affect play. So I think it's probably best to let it slide. However, obviously... I am a Chelsea fan, but Callum hudson Doy was great in the first half. Did create some good chances, early crosses into the box. Giroud just couldn't quite get his head onto them. And I will say that Giroud didn't have the best game today. Abraham was actually out of a small injury. Um, but yeah, Giroud, he's always been that striker. He's one that I think should probably start our European games. It just seems to be something that clicks him and Europe. But he's never going to be the guy that can start consistently for us. And this is why he's, you know, some games just really aren't that suited to him but um, I did enjoy the link up between Ziyech and Mount I thought Ziyech definitely had one of his better performances probably his best performance since Thomas Tuchel did come in I thought the midfield looked good Kante was mopping up things loads of tackles loads of interceptions I will say his passing still a little bit to be desired he was messing up a few attacks um, but yeah the defence as well was just solid Rudiger making some dribbles up the field as well made a few I think Christensen cleaning up stuff well and Aspilicueta you know leading all of that as the captain Chilwell impressed me as well both his defensive and attacking phase and I definitely think he was the right decision to play over Marcos Alonso but yeah nil nil going into the first half we did see Reese James then come in for hudson Odoi. I think that was because of a small injury as well or at least I hope it's a small one because obviously we don't want um, players like Abraham and hudson Odoi to be injured Reese James I thought fared fairly well um, on the ball maybe he wasn't as um, direct as hudson Odoi, but he was still delivering some great set pieces some great crosses just unfortunately we couldn't get on the end of them and it was still a fairly you know repetitive nature of us being able to get the ball up well to the final thirds but then just messing up those final passes our best chance of the game did actually come when um, Ben Chilwell drilled the ball across goal Ziek hits it and forces a brilliant save from David De Gea it was kind of at him but De Gea was going the other way he sticks out his arm and unfortunately for us he did deny that goal probably the best chance of the game falling to Ziek and unfortunately you know he could not put that away um, but yeah I'd say second half we definitely maybe looked a little bit better it was very end-to-end -end, I should say the second half both teams counter-attacking each other a few different fouls made um, I think 
that it was probably a fair enough for us to get a result. However, I do think that we were slightly the better team with XG. You could see that. The only real claim Manchester United had was that penalty incident, which I do think would have been harsh. But if you take away that, um, we probably were the better team and probably out of the two would have deserved the win. But I do think a draw is probably fair. Didn't actually realise that United are without a win against the big six team in the league this season. So that is um, interesting. Even we have beat Spurs. So um, I don't know what's quite happening there. Kind of surprising that they're in second place considering that sort of record. But it does seem like Manchester City are running away with the title. I think that'll be a big game in the week. I think United have Manchester City. So um, that should be a pretty big game to pretty much decide um, the title in a sense. Or at least how soon it's coming to City. But enough about City. This is obviously... Um, a Chelsea review. I do think it was a good performance. I wouldn't say anyone in the team played bad. Maybe one or two players. We did see um, Pulisic and Timo Werner um, come onto the pitch. They didn't really change much. By that point, it seemed like both teams were fairly happy with a... Um, a draw basically we weren't really as direct there was a great moment where Mason Mount basically drove from the halfway line up and um, did his man and um, but unfortunately just couldn't find the ball in the back of net as well so I need to give Mason Mount the credit for that he's definitely our best attacking player in the team at the moment but with that being my little recap guys of the game let me know yours in the comments below I will be getting into my player ratings obviously six being that sort of base rating of the player doing, you know, an average sort of expected game. Going to give Eddie Wadamendi a 7 out of 10. Got the clean sheet against Manchester United. Also had some decent moments. Didn't look as shaky as he did against Atletico Madrid um, as well and against Southampton. Thought he looked fairly decent. You know, his distribution was decent. Um, had to make a couple of saves as well. So, um, yeah, he's going to get a 7 out of 10 for me. Fairly standard, but still a good performance from our goalkeeper. Now, going into the back three, both of these men, or all three of these men, I should say, were all brilliant. And I know... Some of you may think it hurts me to say this because I'm not the biggest Christensen fan, not the biggest Rudiger fan, but you can't deny that today they were absolute monsters. Um, monsters, I should say. They were just absolutely, you know, great. Christensen is never going to be a monster, but, I mean, he was um, absolutely class today. They've been class for quite a few games as well, so fair enough. The three at the back system is really working for a select few of our players, and those are two of them. Um, Rudiger, for me, oh, I'll actually start with Aspilicueta because he's going to get the lowest rating. To be honest, Aspilicueta was still great. He just didn't stand out for me as much as the other guys. Now, that could also potentially be because Aspi's always great. Christensen and Rudiger, you know, you don't expect them to do as well. So when they are, it maybe stands out more. So maybe it's a bit of a detriment to Aspi with just his own, you know, consistent class. But Aspilicueta is still going to get an 8 out of 10. Thought the defence was great as a whole. And um, he basically led it. He kept it organised. Um, he did well, you know, against you know, players like Rashford on the wing. Considering he's got that hand injury as well, you'd think that would be distracting. He did a decent job, in my opinion. And linked up well with maybe some of the attackers down his side too. And um, going next to Rudiger, he's going to get an 8.5 out of 10. Just to doubt to me a little bit more. Did quite a few nice progressive runs um, up the pitch. He even lost the ball at one point, but then won it back. Um, and yeah, he's defending in the air. Um, and just the last ditch stuff from him was very good. And probably, definitely, I should say, his best performance for us so far under Tuchel. Speaking of best performances, this could be one of Christensen's best performances in a Chelsea shirt. I do think there was another good game against Man City, I think, last season. But... Um, yeah, he was just great in the middle of the park. I think if you're going to play him, this is where you play in the middle of a back three. He obviously played there a bit under Conte. And, um, yeah, just read the game really well. He was making some progressive passes as well. You know, I do usually say that the reason I think his pass accuracy is always so high is because he's very safe. But I do think that today he actually progressed the ball fairly well. He also had a shot... Um, to his name too and um, really just cleared up some things as well when balls were getting um, drilled into the box and um, I thought that it was a very solid performance from him and he definitely deserves all the credit despite me giving him quite a bit of stick before this um, I still think that probably Thiago Silva comes in and replaces him and um, when he is fit just shows how great Thiago Silva is um, but yeah, Christensen's doing great, and I mean, if he wants, you know, his Chelsea contract extended, if he wants to have a chance in this team, obviously Silva's getting old as well, so um, he's definitely, you know, giving himself a name under Tuchel, and he's um, definitely, you know, overperforming 
expectations too. But I do think it should solely be kept to that middle um, role of the back three. Don't want to see him on either of the sides, and I don't want to see him in the back four either. But um, in this role, he is thriving, um, and you can't deny that. Going to the wing backs, Hudson and we're going to get a 6.5. Obviously, almost gave away that penalty. I thought he attacked actually very well. Looked like one of our more threatening players in the first half. However, the reason he's getting 6.5 is just because he only plays a half of football. Had to come off through injury. Um, but it was still a decent performance from him when he was on the pitch. Ben Chilwell, going to give that 7.5 out of 10. Thought defensively he really stood out. Think it was the right decision to play him. Um, there was also a clearance he made when um, I believe Rashford it was chipped over the ball. I believe it was maybe to Greenwood or... Maybe it was Fernandez, I don't know. And Chiro actually stretched, headed the ball away. And part of me in my mind was just thinking, Alonso would not have been there. He would have not have been that far back. So I do think that that was great work from Chiro. I think attacking as well. He drilled that ball over to Ziyech too. Um, basically, when it comes to him and Alonso, it's really pretty cut and dry. Alonso, he's taller, has a bit more of a chance of popping up with a goal. Chilwell was basically better at everything else. I do think Chilwell did enough in this game to, you know, maybe prove that he should be playing again. Um, but we don't know. Maybe Alonso was rested for Liverpool. Hopefully not, because I don't really want to see him play against Salah and um, Trent, to be honest. I do, you know, I think we saw last season maybe Rudiger and Alonso. I think we've seen multiple times Rudiger and Alonso be done by Salah before. So um, hopefully um, that is not something we will see um, repeated. But Chiro, 7.5 out of 10 from him. Thought it was a very good performance considering he hasn't played the last few games. Going to the midfield, Kovacic is going to get a 7 out of 10. Thought it was decent, didn't necessarily stand out to me loads. Did lose the ball a couple times, but he also got out of some tight situations, which we all know he's great at doing. Wasn't a standout performance from him, but it was still great, and I was impressed with how him and Kante played together. I didn't think their partnership was that great, but I think it actually worked fairly well in this game. Obviously, you guys all know, I still want to see someone else in the middle, maybe a Mason Mount to add that creativity, um, but... With all the class we've got, these two guys did very well. Speaking of that, N'Golo Kante is going to get an 8 out of 10. Um, like I said, I think he did mess up a few attacks. However, you can't deny how great he was. Basically kept Fernandez just mute the entire game. Fernandez had a pretty poor game from him. Or at least you could put that down to maybe Kante making that happen. Um, but yeah, so many tackles, so many interceptions. Um, did do some good things going forward as well. So I think an 8 out of 10 is fair. Wouldn't say he was maybe man of the match, which I think is what he got um, for us. Maybe some people just sort of don't notice the defence as much. So, you know, he's the next player up. But I do think that Kante was still great this game. And I do think that an 8 out of 10 is deserved. Going to the front three. Going to give Hakim Ziyech a 7 out of 10. I saw some people saying that he was terrible in this game and that he wasn't great at all. I, I actually kind of... Disagree. Maybe it's just because he was obviously better than his other performances, which have been pretty woeful. But I thought him and Mount linked up well. I thought that, you know, you, people say that maybe he wasn't as creative as maybe they would have wanted to. I think it's hard. I think it's hard to create in this team because there's not enough, like, creativity. There's not enough runs made. Giroud's not going to really make runs. Giroud's link-up play also wasn't as great as maybe it was for Atletico. Um... Mount's a different type of attacker. Obviously, the rest of the team are basically set out to kind of defend. So, I think it's harsh to say Ziyech had a bad game. I think he was decent. And, um, yeah, not sure if I'd necessarily put him back into the team and start and be Liverpool, obviously. But I think for this game, he did a decent job and got himself into a great position to almost score if it wasn't for a great save by De Gea. So, I think Ziyech deserves credit. 7 out of 10, I think, is fair for him. Now, I'm going to get that step up, a 7.5 out of 10. That run he made was great. He's made two great runs in his last two games. Um, he's always the one driving. He's always the one trying to create. Always the one linking up the play. Um, we just need people there with him that can reciprocate that and maybe finish off the chances he does create um 7.5 you know just another great consistent performance from him Giroud gonna get the lowest rating of 5.5 his link up play wasn't as good as it has been and when that's you know not happening and he's not scoring um yeah it just wasn't great for him that's like I said he's not consistent enough I think to start Premier League games it's a shame Abraham was out for this game as well could have maybe added a bit of pace if he came on later we did see Pulisic and Werner fill those roles um yeah not a great game from Giroud um and yeah that's just going to happen every now and again I don't think you're ever really going to get two great performances out of him in a row that's just the type of striker he is Going to the bench, um, lastly, Reese James going to get a 6.5. Came on, did his job, but kept the clean sheet. He had a very nice um, cross from a set piece, which no one got in the end to. And um, defensive work was still great. 
And um, Pulisic and, and Werner maybe harshly getting 5.5s. You know, they come on to change the game. They didn't really do anything of note, to be honest. Um, you can put that down to the team maybe being a bit more happy with the draw in the last sort of 15 minutes. But they still didn't really change much. So they are just going to get 5.5s from me. But that's going to be my player ratings, guys. Let me know yours in the comments below. And um, really need to be seeing some of these attacking players stepping up in what is still a few more big games left. Liverpool obviously winning their game against Sheffield United. So they'll be in a bit of form. Like I say, we are sometimes charity FC. Liverpool lost their, I believe they've lost their last four home games in the Premier League. So it's just, you know, it's just typical that they'll come out the blocks trying to, you know, trying that much harder and trying to beat us. So we need to be careful and we need to, you know, switch on as a team. But um, yeah, getting into my player of the season point scoring system, guys, I'm going to give two players one point, and those are going to be Aspilicueta and Kante. Just a game of our defence being absolutely class, I think. I think attacking-wise, we were better than Manchester United were, but um, not enough to, you know, get on this sort of points tally. Um, Kante and Aspi both getting one point. Maybe some would have argued that Kante did better, but um, I don't know, just a few attacks he messed up. I don't think he's man of the match worthy. Two points going to go to Antonio Rudiger. Um, his best performance so far for us this season. Um, thought he was very good. Some really nice progressive runs. Um... Obviously, almost getting himself in trouble again with Scott McTominay. I think he needs to calm down a little bit. Um, but besides that, it's great having someone that aggressive and a soldier in defence. Um, obviously, I've spoke about who I'd rather in defence, but it was still a great performance from him. Christensen going to get the three points. I don't can't believe that I'm saying Christensen's getting three points this season. Haven't rated the guy in ages. Still, you know, have my worries and issues about him. Still going to need to see him more. Would still put Thiago Silva in over him. But for what it's worth, this performance was absolutely great from him. And he's definitely, you know, making his mark on trying to stay in this side. So that is going to be it, guys. You go, As you can see on the screen, how those points are tallying up. New players getting on the, the, the score sheet all the time and rising up the ranks too. So it will be interesting to see how the scores do look when the season does come to an end. But that's going to be it for me, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. Leave a like, subscribe if you did. And as always, I do hope you have a nice day. And I'll see you next time.